right, a customer walked in, had no idea what color he wanted. I picked them, we poured, check it out, and enjoy the video. Hey guys, Rhonda Draculis with RK3 Designs, and today we're gonna create a beautiful beige luster marble. And here today to join me is the actual owner of these pieces that we're doing, Mr. Jim. Thank you. All right, so Jim, tell us a little bit about you. How much epoxy experience do you have? Well, I've done a kitchen, my kitchen counter at home, done a bathroom counter and a couple of end tables. I actually started out with long playing albums and pouring different designs on that just to get the feel for it. And then I uh, also did uh, the wine stoppers. Okay, yeah. Little bowls uh -huh. and turn them on my lathe. All right, so you're not so, a rookie, not really. A rookie, okay. All right, so Jim came to us because he needed help matching some colors. And he had some existing, he's redoing his, his uh, house. So he brought me his flooring, he bought me his cabinet colors, and he bought me his wall colors. And we came up with these colors that we're gonna use today. They are Color Passion, Beige Luster, Color Passion, Taupe Stone, Color Passion, Beach Sand, the Alumalite White Dye, and then Just Resin Rich Gold. You see a pattern here? I absolutely love Color Passion. Guys, they're fast becoming my very, very favorite product. And all of these products are available on my website, rk3designs.com. We're going to put a skim coat down, which is a very thin coat of epoxy. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we want that epoxy to really flow and move very easily. Then we're gonna come back, we're gonna lay our colors out in big blocks because we don't want a busy design. After that, we're gonna come back, we're gonna add some accents of gold. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna pour out just a clear coat, uh, like a skim coat, and it, this doesn't really matter how much you use. Uh, you can think about maybe one ounce per square foot. Doesn't have to be perfect because all you're doing is creating like a greasy surface uh, so that your epoxy can flow. Uh, all right, you'll notice that we have these three pieces. This is the same uh, way that this piece is gonna be in his bathroom. So that's why we've laid them down uh, just like this so that our pattern is going to flow. All right, so I'm gonna do this a little bit. Jim, if you'll put a little bit there, mm -hmm. I'll give you a Bondo spreader. And you can see, I'm just really pulling that epoxy tight. I'm not pushing it over the edge just yet. Just kind of getting it on there. The side that's facing us is going to be a non-finished side. So that's gonna be the side that's against the wall. All right, after that, I'll come in and I'll hit my edges because I really want my edges to be wet so they have an easy time going over. All right, that's good. I'll come in on this other side. Gonna Oops. add some product. So remember what we said, we don't want little areas. So that was our beige luster. Now we're gonna come in with our white. I'm gonna just kind of put it in random little spots. I don't want this to be a predominantly white piece. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good, I always like to save some in my cups. All right, here comes our Color Passion Taupe Stone. And again, we're just gonna kind of have this kind of peekaboo ever so often through our colors. This will be a little smaller areas because we're just gonna kind of meld that. All right, we're coming in with Beach Sand Luster now. And I'm just gonna kind of start adding this as well. Again, this is kind of a accent color coming through here. All right, Jim, I didn't leave you a whole lot, but that's okay. We don't want all these pieces to look identical because if you had a real slab, you would definitely have some variations in your colors. Now, I'm gonna add my clear here in just a minute. We'll take that cup. There you go, perfect. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna add me a little bit more over here. All right, good to go. All right, so guys, if y'all have noticed, I have a cast on my hand. So I got into a little car accident. So hence, that's why I have this big thing here. Now's the fun part. So let's take our Bondo spreader very lightly and just kind of start to meld it out a little bit. And I, if you'll see what I'm doing, I'm just basically kind of getting the, the material on the surface without over melding it. Kind of at an angle, 
we're gonna definitely play with it a little bit more. Main thing we wanna do is not get it too mixed, meaning we're not mixing all those colors together too much. We don't have to get on every inch of the board at this point, because we can still go back with our hands. Now I'm just gonna kinda add clear ever so often, maybe where I see a void or where I wanna kinda open up a little bit. And all that's gonna do is help us build depth in our piece. There you go. Yeah, so any place you have your little yep. voids, you yep. can put that clear in there. Now comes fun part. Let's torch it a little bit. And all that's gonna do is get it a little more fluid, gonna make it a little easier for us to spread. Now we're gonna just use the palm of our hand and we're not gonna push real hard, all right? So we're just, we're just gonna kinda start kinda melding it, pushing it over the edge. If you see an area that may need some more product, just pick it up on your hand and then you can move it to that area. We're kinda keeping the same angle. We're not going in a, in a, a perfectly straight line. Now don't forget our edges, okay? We're gonna make sure we get those color on those edges. But what I am liking about this is it's super subtle. And that's what you need for your sink that's going on there. Yes. All righty. I love this. It's coming along very, very soft. And that's what we're going for is a very soft pattern. But we want to look a little more organic. So what we're going to do is we're going to torch this. And then, Jim, you're going to help me. And we're going to tilt this forward a little bit. Forward. Just, uh huh? And only thing we're trying to get it to do is to slightly move. We don't want it to move a lot because we just want to just get a little bit of that pattern to look really organic. Oh yeah, that looks good. And I like how that's going over the edges. All right, good. I'm torch it first to kind of warm up the product. Yeah, we'll tap that. That's, I'm glad that you saw that. So what we're having is a little bit of surface tension. So we'll just tap it with our finger. All right, so we're gonna tilt this one. As he tilts, I'm gonna heat up just a little bit just to help some product move. So you wanna be really careful not to overheat your product because you can definitely cause some issues. You can burn your epoxy. You can cause the, the light color epoxy to turn yellow. Be very mindful of how much you actually heat it. I love this. It's really turning out. This is what we wanted it to be very, very subtle and have very soft blending of our colors. Now we're gonna come in with some accents. Our Just Resin Bright Gold. Now the reason we're doing some gold accent is because a wall piece that you have, what you're using on your walls, has a little bit of that gold accent, right? Yes. And we don't want a lot of it. Right. We just want a little right. bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take this and we're gonna just start running a few little veins. All right, we'll run on there. Now what we, what you really want to be mindful is when you're doing something like this, that you don't make it look like a zebra stripe. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll come back and I'll run it over the same piece and just kind of come in with a different line. You know what I'm saying? We'll go here and then we'll pick it up. And I'm not worried about these little drips because we're going we're gonna to mess with that here in just a minute. You want me to do it or you want to do it? I'll try it. Okay. All right. Got it? Yep. So start off your table. Yeah. There you go, a little bit more. There you go. I'll have to have more. That's okay, that's okay. So when you load it up, you're gonna really load it up on your stick. And then when you drip it across your table, don't hold it like this, because you're gonna get double drips. You're gonna hold it like this. Okay, see how much, okay. how easier it flows than if yep. you do this, because yep. see how it drops? Okay, so we're gonna start off the table. We're gonna load it up, and then here we go. Kind of keeping with this flow. I'll start here. Now, what you don't want to do also is get a line where you squiggly it like that, okay? Because that's really not in nature. And we're going to kind of play with this a little bit more and do a couple of other things. We know that we don't want these veins to be super bold, right? So now we're gonna come in with our Bondo spreader and we're gonna kind of break up those veins because he just wants it to kind of peekaboo through, right? Yes. Okay. We've broken up that vein now. And then if you'll grab me that alcohol, Jim, you don't want to squeeze really fine because you'll get little really tiny. Fine, yeah. So we're going to just barely squeeze and we're just going to get bigger drops. Those big drops kind of cause that gold to look like it's hammered. Remember, less is best. You can always go back and re-chop. Perfect. Look at you. 
You did a great job. Thank you. The next thing we'll do is tomorrow, after 24 hours, we will let the color coat dry. We'll come in, we'll sand with 220, and we'll pour a clear flood coat. Our clear flood coat is the same product that we use, the Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy, and we'll go three ounces per square foot. Then we'll let that sit for 24 hours and we'll come in with the ultimate top coat. Now, are you gonna go ultimate top coat matte or gloss? I think I'd like the gloss. You like the gloss? There you so. go. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know maybe what colors you would do. Would you do it a little busier or would you do it just like we did? Let me know. Subscribe to our channel because we're gonna hit 100,000 pretty soon. Also hit the bell for future notifications. That way, every time we do a video or we go live, you'll get that notification. Most importantly, remember, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative.